Hey everybody, welcome to Grimm's Forge Gaming. Today we are going to cover my Stamina Warden Bow Bow build, and this is Artemis. Jump right into the build. Um, this is going to be a very easy build for you to put together. Um, both sets that we are running are craftable. Um, first thing we'll look at is we are running a mythic item, and the mythic item is the Ring of the Wild Hunt. Um, you can see that the trade on it is swift. I don't actually want to tra change that or transmute that to something else. If you wanted to transmute it to infuse to get another 100 weapon damage uh, out of it, you could. However, I think that that additional 7% movement speed is uh, far more beneficial for me. As a Bobo Warden, um, we're not a Nightblade you know, bowman, and we can't hop in and out of stealth. So people are going to see us. They'll know where we're at on the battlefield, so we need to be faster than them. Um, that'll keep us out of range of melee characters and uh, keep us in our, our critical strike range, which is at range. So uh, the 7% movement speed on Swift when we're in combat is going to have us moving at 22% additional movement speed. And we do have access to Major Expedition on this, whether it be through uh, dodge rolling with the bow or using Bird of Prey, um, a Warden ability, so for Major Expedition. And you can see that when we're outside of combat, we'll be moving at 52% additional movement speed. So we are very fast. We're probably moving at movement speed cap. Um, and so the first set that we are running on this is going to be Shackle Breaker. Shackle Breaker is important for the way I run this Warden and uh, how I would recommend if you're going to run a bow bow build um, you, our healing kit is really nice on this um, as long as we have shackle breaker we're, we're going to need a good amount of magicka to have a good healing kit and we'll cover that when we get to it but anyway shackle breaker you can see it's uh, two pieces stamina recovery which is good magic recovery is the three piece which is good weapon damage is the four piece which is good and then the five piece is just a lot of stats and uh, most of my pieces are going to be in pen and we're running the prismatic or multi-effect enchants on most of the armor uh, actually i think i might have a hodgepodge of that and just stamina glyphs right now but it, if i were you i would just put the multi-effect enchant on all your armor pieces for this particular build setup next piece that uh next set that we are running is going to be new moon and um, I've got two pieces of jewelry. You can see they're both purple and infused with additional weapon damage. And uh, so New Moon's going to give you that weapon critical, that weapon damage, that penetration, and then more weapon damage. And we're not really worried about the additional uh, ability costs. It doesn't affect the Warden hardly at all. So as far as our bows go, both of them are going to be new moon and they are both nern honed so we don't see a drop in our weapon damage going from back bar to front bar we don't see a drop in weapon damage if we were running defending on the back bar um, i think it's better to have the higher weapon damage and and see the higher vigor tick so that's what we'll do and um, as far as the helm here so this is a two heavy five medium setup okay Two heavy, five medium. My two heavy pieces are going to be the helm and the chest right now. Um, it, if you wanted to make it the chest and legs, you could do that and just run with a medium helm. It's it's whatever. But this piece right here, um, it could be whatever you want. It could be whatever monster said. If you're looking for more weapon damage, if you're w looking for more pin. Um, whatever that is you could put here but right now I just got helm with the trainee because I need more max health um, more max health equals better heals for one of the heals that uh, I'm running on this build so that works out really well also um, I think we're at 27 K health or whatever and that's a nice spot to be at if I could be more that would be great but as soon as we start getting in the 20 um, probably 25 or below then um, that gets a little scary so especially in outnumbered situations you could get burst down super quick so anyways we're running helm of the trainee and it comes in training 
Um, I'm not going to spend transmute crystals to change that. So, but real easy. Jackal Breaker, New Moon, com both sets completely craftable and do a two heavy, five medium setup with M pen and throw the multi enchant effects on there and you are good to go. Let's look at the stats buffed up here real quick. And so you can see our magic recovery is a little over a thousand health recovery is 1100 stamina recovery 1758 this is with the potion popped and then our weapon damage is 3800 almost 3900 crits about 30 percent 27,000 physical or spell resistance and physical resistance and 2900 crit resistance we feel very beefy on this build um, not only are we very fast, but our resistances, those are very good resistances for being a medium armor build. And our healing kit on this is very nice. And so the, we've kind of got that trifecta working for us. Um, good resistances, good healing, and the burst on this lines up really nice. So um, Max Magicka, I would say that the way I'm playing it, you'd want to be over 15k Max Mag. Um, we are running Bewitched Sugar Skulls, so that so we get max stats and some uh, health recovery. That's great, but you need this food. If you if you were to run Lava Foot Soup and Soltrish, you wouldn't have enough Magicka to play this build the way I play it. And uh, anyways, uh, we're running the Serpent. Another thing about this is. If you wanted to hit 4,500, 5K on this build, you could um, by infusing the jewelry piece, you know, the Ring of the Wild Hunt, switching this to the Warrior, and, um, you know, putting a weapon damage glyph on, say, your back bar. You, you could hit uh, 5K weapon damage on a bow build, which is really good. If you play a bow build and... Uh, you know, you know that you could kill people in the 3,500 to 4,500 weapon damage. So having a 5K weapon damage is pretty nice. The whole question is, what's your sustain look like? You're going to be able to stay in extended fights. But anyways, max mag, uh, 18,000. That's pretty good. Max health, uh, 27,000. That's very good. Max stamina at 30,000. That's good. And... Um, so anyways, that's stats there. You see the Serpent, Bewitch, Sugar, Skull. We are a Nord also. I think the Nord passives work very well. Like I said, we aren't able to hop in and out of stealth on with Artemis here. Um, people are going to see us on the battlefield. They're going to see that we're very fast, and um, but they're going to see us, and they're going to try and put damage into us from range, and so we need to be pretty beefy let's look at the tool tips on some of the abilities here i think that that's important and then we're going to explain how i line up the damage on this we are using focused aim and it's got um, a 14,000, almost 15,000 tooltip on it and this applies minor breach that's important um, we're running cutting dive and that's uh, just short of 10k dot and then it's got some additional effects down there at the bottom you can see that if we're over seven meters away which we normally are we're gonna make that target off balance and if they are already off balance or we make them off balance the next time they get hit by this it's gonna apply basically a 1k dot uh, to them and so that's pretty nice um, and then this is our hard CC magnum shot and um, you can see we are running sub assault sub assault recently got changed to where it does not apply major breach otherwise we would be able to apply minor and major breach on this stripping a lot of resistances but our tooltip buffed up isn't bad 15k uh, uh, initially and then another 15k after that and the way this rotation works um, is pretty filthy. Both those uh, sub assaults are going to hit the target. We're running Bird of Prey. This is our form of major expedition outside of dodge rolling uh, if we wanted to use that. And then while slotted, you gain minor berserk, increasing your damage done by 5%. We're also hitting some passives uh, with the Warden Classy Animal Companion. Um... This one's a good passive. When you cast an animal companion ability while you're in combat, you generate four ultimates. So that's great. We got built in ult gen. Also, as a Nord, if we take damage, we get ult ultimate from that. And um, 
you know, increase your magicka and stamina recovery by 12% if an animal companion ability is slotted. So we're hitting this. That's really nice. And then the last thing that we're hitting on our front bar is going to be this. And uh, we've got three separate animal companion abilities on our front bar, giving us an extra 6% uh, damage done. So our tooltips will be buffed up, bumped up from that. Um, so that's nice. Um, anyways, let me buff up again here so we can look at this. Um, 14, 15K right there, like we said. We're looking just short of 10K there. Uh, 8,000 there, and then two separate attacks for 15k. The, the Toxic Barrage still leveling it, but 81,000 up front, and then another 35,000 on the back end. This hits werewolves very hard. And if you're going to try and put this ult into somebody, I recommend that you hit them with a Magnum shot first, and then start channeling this. Um, the reason being is you'll at least be able to get hopefully a tick or two of the upfront damage on the target as they're breaking free and then it'll require them to either hold block or dodge roll uh, to negate the additional damage and if they get hit with even one channel of this uh, multi-channeled you know that four seconds that the 74,000 is going off if they get hit with even one they're going to receive the dot damage after that and so uh, there's pressure there that you can apply. It's pretty nice. Um, let's buff up again. We'll look at the back bar here. On the back bar, I'm running Bombard. This is my uh, immobilization. Uh, this is also how I break Night Blades out of stealth and I apply a movement speed reduction 40%. <coughs> And so, um, if you've ever run B Bombard me before, you know the value that it brings. You just um, channel a heavy, hit Bombard, hit uh, hit a, or hit a light attack, hit Bombard, hit a light attack, hit Bombard, and you'll just hit the entire group in front of you. So, if I'm doing a trash mob clear, I'll make sure I've got a sub assault lined uh, lined up, ready to go, and then I'll switch to my back bar and start uh, light attack weaving the Bombard and those two abilities will pretty much clear a trash mob room, so that's nice. Um, we are running Bull Netch. Bull Netch gives us some stamina back. It's a free ability, and uh, it's our source of major brutality, major sorcery. So, And also, every five seconds, the Netch removes one negative effect. If you have a negative effect on you, this costs nothing. Just spam it. Also, another thing about when you're spamming this is every time you spam it, you see that 623 that's another warden passive there was 934 that's another warden passive that every time you use um, right there bond with nature anytime one of your animal companion skills ends you are healed for 1260 so I'm in PvP it ends up being a little less than that but uh, it's pretty nice considering our front bar, animal companion ability, animal companion ability, um, you know, just in our regular rotation. And so it's pretty good. Um, let's see here. There we go. We got Resolving Vigor on here, still leveling it up. Uh, 15,000 uh, tooltip over four seconds. So that's a lot of healing. Uh, if you've ever seen my Old Man Kratos, Stamden, um, it's a very strong melee warden. Um, check that build out. I think it's called uh, Old Man Strength 2.0 Kratos. I really like that build. Uh, anyways. I run these two heels paired together and it's such a great complement to each other. The reason being is um, this is a stamina ability obviously resolving vigor and this is a magicka ability but look at that up front tooltip heel 7000 and then an additional 849 every one second for five seconds. Also let's say I'm running through the sewers, I'm in a BG, I get ganked, or I'm in an outnumbered situation, I might not be in a position where I can CC or crowd control um, an entire, like, two or three targets, right? It's just not going to happen unless I hit them with a bombard, they're all in front of me or something to that effect. Um, well, the nice thing about it is bombard is uh, considered an immobilization or a route, 
it's not a stun. So I could bombard them, immobilizing them, and then when they broke free of that, like dodge rolling towards me and then start fighting me, I hit a heal. So this is an upfront burst heal and uh, additional heal over time or a hot coming in. But while the effect persists, the winds pulse outwards, dealing a thousand frost damage every one second to nearby enemies. Enemies hit by this effect three times are stunned for four seconds. So just being on my back bar where my heals are at, maybe I need to cleanse something. Maybe I need to hit vigor, then I need to hit this. Um, this is going to apply the stun um, unless they have uh, immovable pots going or something to that effect or they're off CC, you know, they're on CC cooldown. But um, normally outnumbered situation, this is a great thing heal and stun can't beat that and we're running ice fortress um basically this is our just major resolve giving us that armor buff and then it gives us minor protection protection re reducing our damage by five percent for 23 seconds still leveling a lot of stuff up i leveled artemis almost solely in imperial city and she was at level 49 and i did my first dungeon and just ran my first uh, pledges today with some people but that's it that's her only dungeon experience everything else was down here in the sewers fighting uh banners bosses and players so um, i did go up in the districts and got in some really crazy fights with her up there she can hold her own trust me so if you're gonna if you're interested in running a bow bow warden i really like this it's super simple to set up too. shackle breaker new moon um so some things that you could change on the build, um, I would keep Shackle Breaker and I would keep New Moon, but let's say you decide not to run this heal on the back bar. That's a pretty good magic expense along with your Ice Fortress, right? And then if you're using Bird of Prey to kind of zip around the battlefield instead of dodge rolling and burning stamina, I like this for this reason. Um, if you're magic recovery is high enough you could actually um just zip around at major expedition speed at all times um and by the time you've used this uh in the next six seconds when the ability or the movement speed falls off that magic has already replenished itself so you can use this indefinitely it's a really nice uh, play instead of dodge rolling and burning stamina so um, a couple things about the way I play this. Um, obviously, hard CCs are stuns every six seconds, right? And my opening rotation is going to be get sub, sub assault lined up on the ground ready to go because it's going to take full three seconds. But the beauty of it is, is the cast time on focused aim is a full second. Um, so by the time you hit this and then you go to your focused aim and line up your focused aim, just as your focused aim, assuming you're any di you're over seven meters from the target or whatever, um, as you're holding lethal arrow, I also hold heavy attack. Okay, I release the heavy attack the same time lethal arrow is loosed, and so they have a heavy attack, a lethal arrow, plus the um, enchant, the weapon enchant, and sub assault going off. So you had seen this, it's a 14k, almost 15k buffed up, um, going to hit a player and strip their resistances. The sub assault was hitting for 15k up front and then another 15k. Anyways, that's the rotation is hold a heavy attack. After you hit your sub assault, hold a heavy attack and line up a focused aim. Your heavy attack, focused aim, and your weapon enchant will hit the same time as your sub assault. And you're going to animation cancel your heavy attack lethal arrow with a cutting dive. And so if you know what I mean by that is the second your heavy attack lethal arrow lets loose, immediately hit a cutting dive. Okay. And so now all of a sudden you're... Cutting dive, lethal arrow, heavy attack, weapon damage, enchant, sub assaulter going off, and then the thing you finish with is a magnum shot. Okay, so that's the rotation. It's just a whole bunch of damage on somebody and finishes with a hard CC that they need to turn around and break free. The beauty of that 
uh, rotation also is finishing with the hard CC. Um, in the moment that they're getting bursted down and their health is just chunked right in front of them, that's when they're going to real quickly switch to their back bar and try and you know get some heels in to recover and that's right when the magnum shot hits them and stuns them and um you know the second sub assault goes off and hopefully finishes them off so this this build hits very hard and everything lines up very well but if every six seconds you're hitting a magnum shot as soon as you hit a magnum shot on somebody and hard cc them you could switch to your back bar and hit them with a bombard also assuming they're within range this only has a 20 meter range so um, just make sure that when you hit them with a magnum shot that uh, 8 meter knockback it doesn't knock them back too far outside of your range on this but what happens if you've ever had that done to you you get hard cc'd and um, you need to break free of the stun you break free of the stun and you're still rooted or immobilized you can't move and so all the while damage is being put into you so um, and then like uh, I said before I don't use toxic barrage unless I've hard cc'd somebody I might actually do that exact rotation we were just talking about the whole thing but more importantly hit somebody with a magnum shot hit them with a bombard and then start going you know with your toxic barrage so um, there's other abilities that you could play with on this if you didn't want arctic blast i swear by this ability right now i run it on kratos i know it works i know it works on her um i've been in some very crazy uh fights long fights and um, she sustains very well and her healing kit is really nice but if you wanted to run some other things back there, you could you could run with Lotus Flower and then run with one of the Morphs for that or Living Binds. But honestly, this is absolutely the best way to go. So um, you do want to get all your passives in your classes. I'm still collecting Sky Shards. I could probably start filling some of this stuff in. Um, you can see that I really raced her to the end. Well... I didn't grind to the end with her, but she was just down in the sewers killing nonstop, whether it be NPCs, banners, bosses, or players. Um, I was just very active with her. I didn't do any BGs with her um, early game because I wanted to get this stuff online. Once I got this rotation online, then um, I knew she was getting close to her final form, so uh, worked out really well. Right now, because we are just bow bow, this is what you could need to do. Now, on your back bar, let's say you want to push a little bit more weapon damage. Um, this will put you definitely at the 5K, maybe even 5,500. But on your back bar, end up running Master's Bow, and um, you would get rid of Bombard. So you would lose your immobilization, and you would put Poison Arrow, Poison Injection, um, whatever option you decide to go with that. But that's going to proc um the master's bow and if you put a weapon damage glyph on that bow now you've got a lot of extra weapon damage so that's something you can see that <clears throat> we are a medium armor build i haven't put points into this we don't sneak around ever so um people can see where we're at and if they want to come kill us they're welcome to try but um five medium too heavy and when you're too heavy you only need the first three sections there and um so there's that and then the racial passives you can see the most important one uh stalwart's pretty important you get some stamina and some alt gen and then the rugged passives almost 4k additional um resistances so let's jump into the cp and wrap it up you can see that we have nothing in the apprentice when we come over here to the atronach <clears throat> We've got 72 points in the Master at Arms for an even 23% additional direct damage. And every ability that we do is direct damage or has a direct damage uh, component on the front end. Um, and so this is very important. You can also see we got 63 points in the Physical Weapon Expert. And that means that our light and heavy attacks are just going to really thump hard. So an additional 30% hard. You can read that right there. 
And uh, we got 40 points into Precise Strike for 16%. We've got 31 into Piercing for some Pen. 64 points into Mighty for increased Physical Poison Disease Damage. That's good. 60 points into Ironclad. 60 points into Spell Shield. 77 points into Medium Armor Focus. It's these two things that give me my high resistances that you're seeing here. I recommend running higher resistances instead of trying to squeeze out an extra 6%, 12% of damage mitigation. Um, when your max resor uh, re resistances are low, even if you've got an extra 10% damage mitigation, your resistances are low. You're going to take more damage. So kind of offsets itself. Um, so for the longest time, I've always focused on whatever armor I'm running and spell shield and just push my max stat, and I haven't had a problem. So 30 points in a resistant, 0 points here, 43 points in a quick recovery. 26 points into Warlord. Um, this is another thing too. You can run less points into Warlord, run 26 instead of 40 or 50 or whatever. The reason being is if it's an immobilization that you're hit with or a root or a slow, because your bull netch is free, it costs you nothing to just spam your bull netch and remove the immobilization. You don't need to dodge roll. You don't need to break free of that um, just hit your bowl netch and you're good to go most of the time um, so that means we just need this for hard cc's like um, the um, magnum shot or whatever it is the things that stun you so 64 points in the moon calf 64 points in arcanus this is very important 27 points in tenacity that's nice and then 23 points into healthy 66 points into tumbling. We are very tumbling centric. We're not going to stand around and hold block. Uh, now that said, um, our entire back bar is block cast capable. So if we needed to hold block while we're reapplying our buffs uh, because there's enemies near, um, that's the play. So that's CP. This is a Bobo Warden. This is my Artemis build. And it's very easy. We're running um, Shackle Breaker New Moon. You can craft those, and she hits hard, let me tell you. So that's it, everybody. Be safe out there. Thanks.